when solving systems of linear equations in two variables. The graphing method is not 100%. So we don't want to guess at a solution using a picture when we have more precise methods. We look at those precise methods now. So for this part, we consider the substitution method. For the next part, we consider the addition method. Now, for the substitution method, okay, this is just a checklist. It's the type of thing you want to put on a note card and memorize. Start, okay, so we have two equations, an x and y, say. First, I want to isolate one variable in one of the equations, say y. Now, whether you pick x or y will depend on the shape of the equations. So we always go for the one that requires the least work, and if we can avoid fractions, we do so. Then, with y isolated, we substitute into the other equation. That'll remove y completely from the equation. Then I can solve for the other variable, which we're calling x. Once I find x, I can put that back into either equation in the beginning, and that'll let us find y if it's possible. So at this point, we come up against the three possibilities. Okay, either we have a unique solution, no solution, or infinitely many solutions. And we'll consider those in examples. Then, if we have a unique solution, we check. So let's run through an example we've already done before. I consider the system of linear equations. So we have x plus 2y equals 4, 2x minus y equals 3. We run through the checklist. So I'm going to isolate y in this case. Note, perfectly valid to isolate x. It'll use the same amount of work. Okay, so we just push things to other sides. No fractions appear. So we have y equals 2x minus 3. I move to step 2, which is a substitute into the other equation. So we're going to put this expression for y into equation 1. So I have x plus 2 times quantity 2x minus 3 is equal to 4. Okay, so I distribute, and this becomes 4x minus 6. Everything is now in terms of x, so I can solve for x. That gives 5x equal to 10, or x is equal to 2. Now we're going to take this 2, and I can go back to either equation in the beginning. I could even use this equation if I want. So if I put it back into, say, the first equation, I have 2 plus 2y equals 4, so y equals 1. If I had chosen to put it into equation 2, we would have 2 times 2 minus y equals 3, y equals 1, giving the same answer. So we have options here. Now that means the answer to the question is, solution is 0.2,1. We have a unique solution, and we saw that in previous talk. Now, we're not done yet. We should always check our work. So we'll just take 2,1, put it back into the original equations, make sure true statements come out for both equations. So if 2 plus 2 is 4, 4 minus 1 is equal to 3, and that checks out. Okay, recall, if you want another check, you can sketch the lines just to get a rough idea of where the point of intersection is. Let's try an example where we can't avoid fractions. We have the system of linear equations, 3x plus 2y equals 1, 4x plus 3y equals 2. First step, if we try to isolate x or y in either equation, we get fractions. Not a problem, we just need to be careful with our bookkeeping. I'll isolate x in the first equation. So I move the 2y to the other side as a minus 2y, divide through by 3. So we get a minus 2 thirds y plus 1 third is equal to x. Substitute x into equation 2. So I'll have 4 okay, times quantity for x, so minus 2 thirds y plus a third, plus 3y is equal to 2. Okay, note here, we've eliminated x completely from the equation, so I can solve for y. We distribute the 4, okay, so we're solving this equation here. I'll turn 3y into 9y over 3, change the 2 into 6 over 3. So now I just do the arithmetic. I have a third y equals 2 thirds, and we get y equal to 2. Now, take y equals 2. I can substitute that into either equation, so I'll just substitute an equation 1. That gives 3x plus 2 times 2 equals 1. 3x equals minus 3, or x equals minus 1. So I have x and y now, and I have a unique solution. So we have solution 0.2,1.
minus 1 comma 2. Now we're not done yet. We always check our solution. So if I put minus 1 comma 2 into our equations, okay, what do we have? We have minus 3 plus 4 is 1. Minus 4 plus 6 equals 2. And that checks our work. Okay, note for a further check, we can sketch the lines and see where the point of intersection lies. Now, let's consider a case where the possibility is not a unique solution. So what will happen if there's no solution? What does that look like? Okay, let's consider 8x minus y equals 8. 3rd x minus 24th y equals a half. First thing I want to do to make this easier to look at, we can clear out the fractions to get something a little nicer. So if I multiply both sides by 24, we get 8x minus y equals 12. We isolate one of x or y. So here in equation 1, I'll isolate the y. So I have y equals 8x minus 8. Then I'm going to substitute that into equation 2. So 8x minus quantity 8x minus 8 is equal to 12. Distribute the minus sign to both terms. That's going to give me 8x minus 8, which is 0. Plus 8 is equal to 12. So I have 8 equals 12, and this is a false statement. So no matter what I put in for x or y, we'll never be able to solve these equations at the same time. Okay, we always produce a false statement. So that means we have no solution. If we want to check our work here, there's no point to check. So the best I can do is just to graph the lines. And we know when we do that, we'll have the same slope, okay, when we isolate y in both cases to get slope-intercept form. The intercepts, the y-intercepts are going to be different because they have different b's. So we wind up with parallel lines. So if there's no point of intersection, there's no solution. For a third possibility, okay, infinitely many solutions. Let's consider the system of linear equations. 2x plus 3y equals minus 1. Minus 4x minus 6y equals 2. We proceed as usual. Okay, we note if I try to isolate x or y in either equation, we have to deal with fractions. So I'll just isolate the x in equation 1. That gives x equal to minus 3 halves y minus a half. We put in for x in equation 2. Okay, we get this expression here. This has no x in it, so I can solve for y. When we simplify, okay, we note that the y's go away, and I'm left with the statement 2 equals 2. So this is a true statement, and this will mean infinitely many solutions. So if we go back and solve for y in both equations, they describe the same line. Okay, in both cases, we get y equal to minus 2 thirds x, minus a third in slope-intercept form. Now, if we want specific solutions, Okay, what I do is, I'll just take any x, put it into our equation, we get a y, that's a solution. And then we can just keep putting in different x to get different solutions. So for instance, if we put in x equals 0, out comes a minus 1 third. So we have 0 minus 1 third as a solution. If I put in a 1, I get a minus 1 for y. So we get 1 comma minus 1 for a solution. Okay, note here, I can check these points. For instance, 1 comma minus 1. It gives me 2 minus 3 equals minus 1, so that's good. I have minus 4 plus 6 equals 2. That's good also. So this is definitely a solution. For a final example, let's consider a case with a horizontal or vertical line. So here, things are much easier than in the previous cases. So let's consider the equations given by 2x plus 3 equals x minus 1, x plus y equals 1. Now note, in that first equation, okay, we can clean things up. When I do that, we'll have the equation x equal to minus 4. So it's going to be a vertical line going through okay, the x-axis at minus 4. If I want to isolate one of our variables, that work's already done. We have x equal to minus 4 from equation 1. I substitute into equation 2. So I have minus 4 plus y equals 1, y equals 5. Then you'll note, okay. The rest of the steps are already taken care of. Okay, we already have our x and our y, so our solution is minus 4 comma 5. Of course, we check our work. So we'll put these into the original equations. Okay, so we work that out. Okay, we have this long equation, which works out. Then I have minus 4 plus 5 equals 1, which also works out. So this checks. If we look at the graph, okay, just a review. Note, 
For our vertical line, slope is undefined. For our second line, okay, y equal to minus x plus one in slope intercept form. Okay, slope is minus one, so here the slopes are different, so we have a unique solution. If we graph our lines, okay, we wind up with our point of intersection over here, which is around the minus four comma five as promised. So that also checks our work.